Our chapter is Genesis chapter 16. Please take your Bible. Let's move to Genesis chapter 16. Prendete le vostre Bibbie e aiutatevi a help me to share the video, help me to like, help me to spread the word because to learn the Bible is a very good thing. Aiutatemi a condividere il video, mettete like e se avete qualsiasi commento, qualsiasi eh, domanda, mettetelo dentro eh, in, uh, l'apposito spazio dove c'è il commento. Amen. So Genesis chapter 16, are we all there? Are we all there, Genesis 16? Praise the Lord. Genesis 16. Genesis chapter 16. Here comes the reading of the word of the Lord. Now, Sarai, Abram's wife, had borne him no children, and she had an Egyptian maid servant, who named, whose name was Hagar. So Sarai said to Abram, See now the Lord has restrained me from bearing children. Please go in to my maid. Perhaps I shall obtain children by her. And Abram heeded the voice of Sarai. Then Sarai, Abram's wife, took Hagai, her maid, the Egyptian, and gave her to her husband, Abram, to be his wife. After Abram had dwelt ten years, after Abram had dwelt ten years in the land of Canaan, so he went in to Hagar and she conceived. And then she saw that she had conceived, her mistress became despised in her eyes. Then Sarai said to Abram, My wrong be upon you. I gave my maid unto your embrace, and then she saw that she had conceived. I became despised in her eyes. The Lord judged between you and me. So Abram said to Sarai, Indeed, your maid is in your hand. Do to her as you please. And then Sarai dealt harshly with her and fled from her presence. Okay, so we are going to, from one, from chapter one, there, from verse one to six of chapter 16, Genesis 16, is where we are going to base our Bible studies today on. And we are going to also read the Italian version so that our Italian uh, congregation also online can follow us. So, a Genesis chapter 16, we will read verse one to verse six. Or Sarai, moglie di Abramo, non gli aveva dato figli. Aveva una serva egiziana di nome Agar. Sarai disse ad Abramo, ecco il Signore, ecco, il Signore mi ha dato ster, mi ha fatta sterile. Ti prego, va alla mia serva, forse avrò figli da lei. E Abramo diede ascolto alla voce di Sarai. Così, dopo dieci anni di residenza d'Abramo nel paese Canaan, Sarai, moglie di Abramo, prese la sua serva, Agar, egiziana, e la diede per moglie ad Abramo, suo marito. Egli andò ad Agar, che rimase incinta, e quando si accorse di essere incinta, guardò la sua pat- padrona, con disprezzo. Sarai disse ad Abramo, l'offesa fatta a me ricada su di te. Io ti ho dato la mia serva in seno e da quando si è accorta di essere incinta mi, ha, mi guarda con disprezzo. Il Signore sia giudice fra me e te. Abramo rispose a Sarai, ecco la tua serva, ecco, la tua serva è il tuo potere. Fate ciò che vuoi. Sarai la, tra- la trattò duramente e quella se, quella se ne sfuggì da lei. Amen. So, we are going to study on this 
um, part very well because it is very important that we pick up some points. Now, listen to me very carefully. Is, do we have all our attention over here? Yes. Okay, listen. Now, the first thing that happened is that Sarah realized that she couldn't give birth, even though God had told them previously, as a matter of fact, three um, has told them previously in chapter 15 that he would give Abraham what? A, a child, a, 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 a head to his inheritance. Amen? Amen. Now, since Sarah is the one to bear the child and she is not able to bear, she decided to do something about the situation. Then what did she do? She took her servant and gave it to Abraham, saying that perhaps she will get a child through that and that's how the miracle will happen. Today, I want us to emphasize on two uh, scenarios over here. The first scenario being that Sarai took decisions and um, Ab Abraham, the husband, who we suppose should have known better, still heeded to him. But the second part of this study is, is the servant who had no say when they put her in a situation to be what? A child carrier or to be pregnant with the child. Now, mind you, I want you to take a, a full picture of this. Most people view this situation as maybe a, an abuse, but it's not always the case in the olden days. As a matter of fact, it wasn't the case in the olden days. You will be a privileged servant to be upgraded to what? A, a second wife or a mistress of a man who is great like Abraham. So she got the privilege to be what? Upgraded. So she's no more a regular servant, but a servant who is, who is carrying the child of the master of the house. Are you getting the picture? I want us to get the picture very well. But however, we do not see if Haggai wanted or did not want. She just was obeyed. So that's the two pictures we are looking at. Siamo guardando um, Genesis capitolo 16. Ci stiamo vedendo che ci sono due um, uh, parti in questo uh, capitolo. Voglio che noi notiamo due cose. Una parte è il fatto che um, Sarai nel non aspettare che Dio faccia il miracolo che aveva promesso a Abramo di dargli un erede, lei è stata eh, eh, andata avanti a dare la sua serva egiziana, che si chiama Agar appunto, ad Abramo per avere figli attraverso di lei. Quello è una, un, un, una delle cose che dobbiamo guardare e anche dobbiamo aggiungere appunto a questo che Abramo che dovrebbe sapere di meglio purtroppo ha ascoltato la moglie e ha fatto quello che e si fa Agar l'altro ehm, punto che dobbiamo guardare è, è per quanto riguarda Agar lei è una serva e è una serva che è stata messa in una posizione di essere incinta nella Bibbia non ci ha detto se lei voleva oppure lei non lo voleva, però voglio che voi capite qualcosa. Nel passato essere una, una serva o una schiava era una, un, nel, nello stato eh, sociale, sei proprio al fondo. E quindi per una, una serva essere eh, dato il privilegio di, porta, di portare al mondo l'erede di... Eh, del padrone di casa era una cosa eh, prestigiosa su per dire perché per loro non avrebbero av avuto nessun tipo di vita sociale elevata tranne avere in eh, un una porzione da badare oppure come donna avere eh, una situazione in cui puoi essere eh, la madre dell'erede della casa questa è una cosa che succedeva in passato, quindi non voglio che nessuno eh, eh, veda la, la situazione in modo totalmente negativo. Voglio che noi capiamo la situazione nel passato. Now we are going to see this situation and we are going to ask or base our, um, 
our Bible school on this. The first thing is, when Hagar found out she was pregnant, no, the first thing, actually, let's move a little bit back. The first thing is, why wasn't Sarai patient? Why wasn't Sarai patient? Somebody talk to me. Why wasn't Sarai patient? Talk to me, yes. Uh, it is very easy to talk about this patient. The years, it took the years in the Bible. For the long time. Long time. So that's the point. Yeah, that the reason long. why she was not patient is because her aspiring date is becoming what? Closer and closer. So if God gives you a promise and the promise is is um, the timing, you know, is now going off. Please still be what? Patient. Stava avanzando negli anni e si stava rendendo conto che purtroppo non può avere figli dopo la menopausa oppure eh, se la menopausa accade eh, è finita per lei. Quindi ha, ha preso questa decisione. Second um, question, are you listening? Why did Abraham heed to his wife? Why did Abraham heed to his wife? Somebody talk to me. Why would Abraham heed to his wife? You would think that Abraham should be the more matured one here, since God is the one who is always talking to Abraham, and it's not, God does not talk to Sarah, per se. He always talks to Abraham. So why would Abraham heed to his wife? Faith, talk to me. Why would Abraham heed to his wife? Why would your husband listen to you when you are giving him bad advice? Talk to me. It's not your portion in Jesus' name. But think about it. Why would a man listen to the wife? Yes. Uh, for me, it depends on the submissiveness of the woman. Submissiveness of, of the woman. Of the woman to the man. Okay. Um, prior to that period or that day that Sarah suggested this option to Abraham, yes. there weren't any incident where Bible recorded that Sarah was being a... a a bad wife, a bad wife. A difficult wife to the husband. Okay, so your own is he because of her behavior towards her husband being a good wife, yeah. the husband listened to her. Yes. Do we all agree? Yes. All right. Is that the case? Well, according to the Bible, we said and Abraham came to Sarah. He didn't give us a specific reason why he did so, but because one thing I do know is that he too realized that he's also advancing what in age. The wife is also advancing in what? Age. Okay. Mommy, can you please throw a little light on that situation? Why would Abraham listen to Sarai? Or what circumstances can make a person who has covenant with God and has a promise with God go ahead to listen to the advice of a close person? Um, please, before you come in. Yes. Uh, coming back to this question, we all agree, or some of us will agree that there are some questions you don't ask the man, or some suggestions you don't bring to the table. Like this one. I, I, I don't believe there is any man, maybe there would be any, some men, but most people we succumb just like Abraham did. I'll just, I'll, just, I'll just stop you right Mostly there. Mostly where is coming for the wife. Let me stop you right there. Don't get Mostly the wrong Mostly where is coming for the wife. Abraham never, ever, the Bible never record that he ever looked at a woman lustfully. So let's get that clear. Abraham no, no. did not sleep with her guy because he has been eyeing her or because the wife suggested that he take another woman. We are looking at what? The promise. Somebody said the promise. the promise. So don't get the wrong idea. So I know where you are coming from, and we have hit that topic before. But let's stop right there. Let, we are talking about what the pro, his concern is about what the promise. Somebody said the promise. The promise. Okay, let me translate in Italian quickly. Then I come to you. Um, stiamo parlando della seconda domanda che è perché Abramo avrebbe ascoltato la moglie anche se non è esattamente quello che Dio gli ha detto. Dio gli ha detto, se ricordate capitolo eh, 15, che non è Eliesa il suo servo che sarà l'erede, ma darà a lui un erede che viene dal, dalla sua, eh, da, da, da lui in sé e dalla moglie Sarai. Quindi se lui sapeva questa cosa, perché avrebbe ascoltato la moglie per poi portare a Gai dentro eh, la pittura? Ascoltatemi, lui ha detto che praticamente sta nel fatto che forse Abramo ha 
stava guardando a Gar in modo eh, eh, tentativo, però voglio che noi chiariamo questo punto molto bene. Abramo non ha mai guardato nessuna donna tranne la moglie, perché la Bibbia ci ha detto così. Non è stato ricordato, non è stato scritto da nessuna parte, ma lui stava guardando la promessa, è lì che eh, la sua mentalità era, per questo ha ascoltato la moglie. In più, lui ha detto anche che sta nel fatto che eh, eh, la, la moglie era disperata e quindi voleva un erede. Ok, please, your contribution. Just uh, no. to like, when you, before the angel visited Sarah, Sarah, told Sarah about Sarah, I come to this time, next time, time of me. But before then, the promise that was going to happen, um, there was no way they would miss. I'm just uh, being logical. logical. logical okay. Sarah's name was not mentioned. And at that time, it was not a to marry more than one wife. Mm -hmm. Sarah might give a solution, everyone might see reasons. Okay, maybe I might be, I'll go for that foundation. Was Sarah mentioned to be the mother of all nations? We are all flesh and blood. It might be that was how Sarah convinced him. It might be, I am not the one that God is going to give the child. Try my, my maid. So it is. Possible. Okay. Yes. Uh, sì. eh, il, suo, il suo contributo è che sta nel fatto che per lui Abramo non ha proprio eh, visto, no, non ha considerato che forse sarà Sarai a, darla, a darlo eh, l'erede e in quei tempi si poteva sposare più di una moglie, quindi era un'opzione che lui aveva. Ok, please. Io, uh, to my emoji say. Man of God. <laughs> That's where I'm going. Well, um, I will agree with him to some extent. Oh, uh, I would say what I, I, my second contribution was kind of like a cling to what he just said. I see, uh, well, I did not say Abraham uh, had eye for Hagar girl to that period. But what I said was that the suggestion Sarah brought, it's something, we, we all use flesh and blood, just according to what he said. It's something that most people would, would not turn deaf ears to. Because, now, bring it practical. We are married is something that uh, I believe uh, the women, the wife, protect the home more than the men. So if, if a man is not cheating on the woman, it's because he loves and respects that woman. And, yeah, yeah, because he respects that woman. And he, he, he's also a disciplined man. But that does not mean he, he doesn't have that urge. Or oh, those urges wouldn't come. But due to the love and respect he has for the woman, he, he restrains himself from doing other stuff. Then imagine that that's the woman coming to tell you that... Uh, uh, why don't you try this person or this person, this person? He, he will jump at it. He will jump. Most people will jump at it. So it's 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 logical. It's simple. It's something okay. that so we can all relate to. Let me. I will stop you right there again. again. Because <laughs> listen, listen to me. The Bible. When the Bible removes some details, he, they remove some details because what? As we learned, the Bible is inspired by the Holy Spirit. So when some details are put over there, it's because it is important. For example, David. David was supposed to go to work. The guy was walking at the rooftop and saw a naked woman. The Bible recorded the reason, the why, the place, and the woman. You understand? But when the Bible does not record it, you cannot add pepper to salt. So we cannot believe, according to our own feelings, how it will happen. I understand, but you use the word over there, most men. He's not one of those men. But he did. So which he means slept he with the, the wife because the wife, uh, he slept with Hagar because the wife told him huh. so. But he did not sleep with the wife because he has sexual edges or because he needs to, you know, discharge. No. But he could He's have also said no. what? A uh, hair. He could Somebody have said no. Say hair. Hey. Hair. Say hair. hair. He's looking for what? A, a child. He could have also said no. 
Because, because he, he's the one that communicate more with God. He's the one that that uh, um, have that faith of Holy Spirit, or that talk with angels. So he could have said, uh, my, my my wife, don't worry. I believe that God will give us His son through you. I believe that God will give me this uh, through you. It's, it's a man of faith. He could have done that, but he didn't. Why did he do it? Why didn't he? Because he's also looking for a child. Because it's flesh and blood. Because he's looking for a don't put don't put two things and mix it up. No, looking for a child and looking and, and listening to your flesh is two different things. Objectively, objectively, and I'm saying it with seriously. I don't want anyone to start to have the wrong idea. Don't put the idea no, in your I'm, mind. I'm not putting the idea. I'm he just thinking about flesh and blood. Yes. By his flesh and blood, who has a wife? He did not need to flex. Tell them. Tell he them didn't flex. He wasn't the flex. I'm not saying it's a flex. We should understand. Let, let no. mommy answer that question. For you. No, I, I I want mama to to say the last. <laughs> she, 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 has, she has taken what? our points, and so now let her let her finish for us. Please help me. Video, no, video man. Man. Video <laughs> man. Video 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 Thank you for coming. We are studying the Genesis 16 and we are here about a situation. Abraham, at that time called Abraham, believed in God, has walked with God for some years and a promise is given to him and um, he's waited for the promise and it has delayed. Therefore, the wife brought a suggestion. Now, Pastor Christiana well, is insisting for us to understand that Abraham is not among the men that would take a babe like that. Um, generally, usually, biologic, uh, uh, chemistry-wise, that men are easily turned on to take this type of gift. Are we making it play? Okay. So it's like you are you are hungry and uh, you are so hungry and somebody presents you with your favorite food. Your favorite food. The, the normal one you take is rice and stew and somebody presents you another rice and stew that is fresh and hot and warm. Okay, so Minister Eric is saying, he being a man, want to wear the young man's shoes to let us understand that when the thing is fresh and hot, it's fresh and hot. And Pastor Christiana is saying, not Abraham, he's a different kind of man. Okay, so all of us, let's say together, Abraham is a different kind of man. Because now, Minister Eric, Mama. in those days, you can, you can marry as much as you want. And you have waited for some time and your baby, your child is not coming. Abraham could have gone to marry. He has many s- s- servants in the house. But he didn't until the wife did that offer. So how do, which window are we going to see this situation? The answer is here. The answer is that a good suggestion is not God's suggestion. There is different clap for that. The challenge Abraham had is that God is teaching Abraham good things doesn't mean it's God thing. So a woman brings a suggestion and it's so good. Now, in the concept of uh, Minister uh, Eric, it's good because it tastes good. In the concept of the Bible, it's good because it suggests the suggestion is good. 
So if you are a person of the flesh and you are not walking according to God's ways, okay, it will be good because of the taste. But to Abraham, he was desiring fulfillment of promise. And a good suggestion made him to think, let's take the good suggestion. So in this concept, the situation is about mixing up good suggestion to God's suggestion. If God asks you, this is where your church is, even though it is far, like the way the Lord said to us, you have to be in the land of Italy, even though it is not as you want, or, yes, I think that's the best way to say it. You have to be at where God wants you to be. So a good suggestion is not what God's suggestion. That is where we are going to put our suggestion. But our Bible studies today, it does not mean that giving somebody fresh jollof and old jollof is, is not tempting. Okay? Giving somebody fresh jollof or old jollof or rice and stew, warm food is not tempting. The temptation was there, but we need to understand that Abraham was a mighty man, a rich man, a wealthy man. So he didn't even need the suggestion of the wife because he is in the position to do anything. But because he's not that kind of man, he won't do he only did it because he wants to make the wife happy. Are you are you getting it? Yes, ma'am. Anything so and so we come back to to uh, what Eric is saying. When you have a good wife, you make her happy. The Bible says Sarai. The Bible says Sarai calls his husband what? Lord. What is the meaning? Lord means I don't have my own head. You are my head. When you say anything, it is final. I cannot do anything except you agree. So now, that is the same spirit she approached the husband. We are waiting for a promise and the promise is not coming. I suggest or I insist I suppose we should use the word. I insist, I insist that let's create our own dream come true. And because, one, she was a good wife. That's one point. We are clapping for the wives today. Number two, because she humbled herself to call her own husband what? My Lord. That's how I call that, my Lord. My Lord means you cannot think for yourself. You allow him to do what? Think for you. So just in case, let me chip this one in. Just in case you were living by yourself, you were doing everything by yourself, you were managing your own future, and you got married, please, the moment you enter under the umbrella of your husband, your husband's work is final. Don't tell me anything about European marriage or Western marriage. We are talking about biblical marriage. And you will clap, but God will clap for you. Your husband's suggestion is what? Final. Whether you like it or not. Why? Because you are a headless person. Bring your mind here. You have no head. You are headless. 